Hello and welcome to the 56th video in this series program of Chess Engine in C. So the next series of videos are now going to be all about implementing the code that goes in these placeholder functions that we introduced in the previous video. So the first one that we're going to implement in this video is relatively simple. In fact, apart from alpha beta, they're all quite simple. But we're going to put something else into this evaluate um, because at the moment it's just returning zero, which means it's evaluating every single position as a draw. And the standard thing, well, the standard thing, I think, I think a lot of people do straight away or consider, okay, we'll leave it there, is they just evaluate the material balance. But much like how I said, we're not going to let the engine play a game via the GUI against another engine until it's got quiescence search, we also have to really put some kind of rudimentary evaluation in. Because if you just have material evaluation, it's also pretty horrible to look at. Usually it moves a knight out and then shuffles a rook backwards and forwards until eventually it notices it's getting squashed by the opposition and starts giving away pieces to protect its king. So we're going to put but only a very, very rudimentary evaluation in on top of material evaluation, but surprisingly it allows it to play a relative, a markedly better game. So the way it's going to be done is I, inside good old Libra Office here, created a set of 64 square tables. Now, I'd recommend rather than I'm going to paste these in, uh, that you download the code and paste these in yourselves or put whatever values in you want. But essentially the way they work is, and I'll copy the first one in just now and then explain it, is uh, what's called p-square tables. So remember all the evaluation values are in hundreds of a pawn, so this 10 here is 0.1 of a pawn. And when we put our score out to the GUI, we give it out in hundreds of a pawn. And all this is, is exactly what it says. It's the 64 squares of the board, and depending on where a pawn is, it gets given that value, positive or negative, the side to move, that sort of the side in question that with the, with the piece on that square, that score. So, for example, if white had a pawn on d2, he would get a minus 10. He gets to have a, a plus 20 if he's got the pawn on d4, and in fact, moving from d2 to d4, which is usually a good move, nets him a total gain of 0.3 of a pawn in the position and so on and I've tried to encourage the side pawns to stay at home um, there's pawns to go in the center basically and if the pawns ever get this far then to push them further because pawns promote eventually very basic rudimentary stuff and we'll be working a lot later in the series on refining the evaluation a little bit but at least this gives the engine some idea of where it might want to put its pawns and I've applied the same principle for knights, rooks, and bishops. I haven't done anything for the king or the queen because we don't need it at the moment and this whole series isn't an exercise in how to create and tune an evaluation function. But uh, just for now, basically it's saying develop the knights, so a minus 10 on the start square for the knights. More or less it's saying put them in the centre and try and advance them a little bit. And it's a very similar thing for the bishop, except this is more symmetrical, based around the center. And the rook has some kind of encouragement to get it to centralize the rooks, and also put a rook on the seventh rank gets a nice quarter of a pawn bonus as well. So it'll give us the illusion it knows what it's doing. If it can never get a rook to the seventh rank, it'll most probably play it there. And that's all there is for that. The only th other thing we need to do, of course, is we know how that we go from our 120 square index to our 64 square index to get these values. Of course, black's um, piece pawns, for example, start on this rank, uh, sorry, on this rank here, not on this rank here. So I've also created an array, which again you should just copy and paste in, which simply mirrors the squares so that we can use this mirroring to get the equivalent square index for black. So for example, if we're dealing with A2, then we know that the equivalent of that is actually a7 for black, which is square 48, etc, etc. And the last thing I think I did here, yes, was created a macro just to type slightly less text to use this array here. So we take in our 64 base square into this array to get the mirrored one for black. That should be fairly easy to follow. So the actual evaluation function itself is not very difficult at the moment. I'll just paste this and make some more space down the bottom to bring this up a little bit. So we have some definitions at the start, variables, and the first thing we do is we set our score equal to 
the material score for white minus the material score for black. So as we run through this evaluation function, we'll be doing this from the point of view that white scores positive and black negative. And at the end of the function, if white is to move, we'll return the score, and if black is to move, we'll return minus score, because of course we need to re return positive from the point of view of the side to move. But whilst we're adding the scores up in the function, we'll have white as positive and black as negative. So if black had more material than white here, score would be negative, but we returned positive because black is if, if black is to move. And the next thing to do really, I'll paste in just the pawns for now, but the other pieces are all absolutely identical, just as we did in move gen, and something you should be familiar with by now. We set our piece, we loop through our pieces, and then here I'm simply adding up giving a positive to white for the score for the pawn tail uh, table and then because it's black and a black pawn I'm now subtracting the score and I'm using the mirror 64 on the square as well to get the negative values and I'm going to now brutally copy and paste the rest of the code in here because it's really not anything different to these it's just that the pieces are different so we have the white knight, the black knight the white bishop, the black bishop, the white rook, the black rook. And like I said, at the moment, it's very, very rudimentary evaluation, although it does play a surprisingly, especially in the opening, sensible-looking game. It falls apart usually when it comes to king safety and the end game and things like this. But at least it'll try and place its pieces somewhere in the middle of the board, which is a start. Later on in the program, once we've got the search working and we're connected up to a GUI, and we can see the results of our changes a little bit better, we'll add some things into here. So, for example, for rooks we'll add, and queens we'll add open files, a bit more detail on the seventh rank. For pawns especially, we'll look at doubled pawns, isolated pawns, backward pawns, things like this. And for the king, of course, we need to find some way of encouraging the king to stay out the way in the middle of the game and towards the end game come into the middle of the board where it's usually strong. But for the next, well, for the foreseeable future, this will suffice as our evaluation function. And the only thing that remains now is to negate the score if it's black to move and return the score. So that's all there is to it for the evaluation function. I'm just going to make this and check that it does make and it does, good. So for this video we'll leave that there and in the next video now we've got our evaluate we'll move back into search.c and start filling out the search function. So thanks very much for listening. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.